Hi and welcome to this week two of the Summer of Music Tech. This week we're going to be looking at performing and inputting bass parts. Before we get on to that, in this video we just want to recap a few things and answer a few, few questions from last week. Now one of the first questions I got was actually how do we get rid of this big screen here? Now what you're going to notice as you float around these screens, you've got these little arrow buttons. We've got these all over the place and little wiggly lines and arrow buttons and these basically collapse areas it's really quite clever it's a way of saving real estate and actually maneuvering around so if you ever want to get rid of this area you can just click on this arrow there and it and it's gone so that was the first thing and I also said about getting rid of this info thing and once again you got an arrow for that so that was the first question the next one was how do we label parts now this is really important we're going to need to label our parts we're going to need to get organized okay so really straightforward if you've got a a right clicking mouse you can right click on any of these containers and then you can come down to where it says rename okay if you haven't got a right clicking mouse you can use the short code now on mine it's command it's command R. If you're on a PC, it's going to be control R, okay? And once you click on this, it just comes up this and you can actually give it a name. So in this instance, I've called it swing drums. Okay, so the next thing was how do you rename the actual container? So for all these, I want it to be drums. So same again, control R, command R, or right click and rename. And I'm just going to call it drums like I've done here. Another thing that you can do is if you hover over the corner, you get this bracket and this allows you to make each container or each track bigger or smaller so you can see the labels. So that was one of the big questions, actually how do you, how do you kind of deal with these kind of labelings? I want to show you a, a bit more of an advanced labelling because of the way that Ableton works. You've got these clips, now you can only activate one clip per track so I can't have this track activate along with this it changes over okay so how you stop these tracks is either by changing them or coming down here and pressing the stop button and once you stop that it will take it will take into account of the global quantization which is one bar so it won't stop it for one bar one thing you would have noticed then is actually the the track itself carried on going. Let me just show you that again. So I'm going to press stop and you'll hear the metronome keeps going and it's telling me hey it's still running in the background. One way you can stop that is by pressing the stop button. Another way is to start stop a track you can just press the space bar on your keyboard. So space bar again and it stops it. If you want to activate a whole line, and we're going to we're going to need this once we get into the bass shop, we're going to need to be, to be able to activate a whole line. You've got a really nifty button over here, and this button here is the master track. And if you click the play on the master track, anything that is in this line, let me stop that. Anything that is in this line will play. You also notice I, that I've relabeled this. I've gone um, rename, and I've. I've called this 100 BPM and that may seem a bit random to a lot of people but what I've basically done here is I've told Ableton that if I activate this play button that I want it, the whole line to play at 100 BPMs so 100 beats per minute and you'll notice up here that now my track is 100 BPM so if I click on this one where it says 155 BPM you'll see that this tag here will change to 155 and anything that is in this line here will play. And there it is. Okay, so there's a couple of naming conventions I just wanted to kind of clear up before we went any further. We're going to do a few more of these as we go along, but we're going to start creating our bass parts now and learning how to play. So hopefully this week you've been doing, or sorry, last week, you've been doing your 15 minutes a day practice. If you haven't been practicing 15 minutes a day, you really need to because we're going to start moving at a, a bigger pace now. So making sure that you can play each of these drum parts and hopefully you've gone online and you've found some more drum parts and you've tried to learn how to play them. And this week we're going to look at five bass parts, okay? So I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll learn our first bass instrument.